Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. You might have noticed we're set up a little differently than usual, and that's because I'm going to be doing an awesome collaboration video with Sebastian from Atmoseeker. Now, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take the digital approach to kit bashing using Mesh Mixer, and he's going to take a couple of pieces from failed prints he's had and put them together to make something totally new and different. Now, I could gush for hours about all the cool stuff that Sebastian does over on Atmoseeker, but I'm going to let him explain it. Hey Tyler, thanks for having me. Yeah, Atmosica is just a channel where I focus on a lot of uh, terrain and props and atmosphere and ambience and all the kind of tools and music and lighting to help create an immersive experience for tabletop role playing games. Uh, yeah, it's just been a big passion of mine for a, a few years and it's been great to bring it all to YouTube and uh, show you how it's done. Yeah, absolutely. A ton of really cool stuff. Definitely check out his channel. You can find a link for it down below. But without any further ado, let's get into this process. All right, so the models I ended up using were the Grave Giant from Rocket Pig Games and the Demon Scavengers from Beastarium Miniatures. You can find links for all of these awesome models in the description down below. So I started off by just looking over these models and coming up with an idea for what I wanted to do. And spoiler alert, what I end up doing isn't technically kit bashing, so I sort of cheated just a little bit, but don't think about that because reasons. Uh, so the giant has this clump of earth on his back, and I think it looks like a muffin, so that's what I'm going to call it. So he's got this muffin on his back, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could use that space to hide creatures in? So, you know, your players are fighting this creature, they get it down to, you know, quarter health, they think that they're going to win, they think that they're going to take this thing out, and then all of a sudden the top of the muffin pops off and these creatures come crawling out. So that's kind of how I went with this one. You can see that I'm using the plane cut tool here to cut the top of the muffin off, once I kind of fiddle around with the, the size and the scale a little bit and the angle to make sure that I'm getting a good clean cut and not going to leave any artifacts or anything behind. Um, so I go to remesh full and keep both to make sure that I'm keeping the top and the bottom half of this muffin after I cut it. Uh, and then from there I'm going to go to separate shells to pull those shells apart. So now you can see that we have a top and a bottom that are separate. We can move them separately. And now from here, this is where it sort of gets a little bit more tricky. Um, what I like to do to create a hollow inside of a model is I like to do what's called a Boolean difference. And what that means is uh, I'm going to take one model and subtract its mass from another model. So you can see here I'm going to bring in a sphere and then I'm going to play around with it to get the right dimensions. So the trick is you want to make sure that you're getting it big enough that you're going to create the, the space that you want, but you're not making it so big that it's going to actually poke out of the edges of the model and cause some kind of artifacts or potentially just ruin the model uh, or at least its integrity. So it takes a little bit of finicky sort of playing with it, moving it around and making small adjustments, which is what I'm doing here. But eventually you can get into a good spot and it might take a couple of tries, but you can do what's called a Boolean difference. Uh, this is where you can select both models and you're going to subtract the size of the sphere from the rest of the model. You can see just like that, it wipes everything out. And now we've got a nice little hollow in there that we can hide things in. But I wanted to take it a step further. So what I ended up doing is I ended up adding spots for magnets because I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if it could be magnetized so it makes it really easy to, to pick the top of that muffin off and put it back on again and, and kind of bring these creatures out. So we're going to see how that works. But in the meantime, I want to make sure that this is a really creepy experience for my players because I'm really liking how this is turning out. So I think I have a good question for Sebastian that only he can answer. All right, so I really like the direction I ended up going in with this model, but I want to make sure that when I bring it out of my table, my players are suitably creeped out by it. So Sebastian, what are two easy things that I can do to really up that creepy atmosphere so when I bring this thing out, it's just an awful experience? Well, uh, yeah, I think sound is going to be the, the really important part, especially to give this monster some real presence on the table, like especially if you can get some good uh, monster audio clips from something like uh, Tabletop Audio or Battle Bards or some kind of um, sound website like that they can get some really nice like cycling kind of sounds. Even Sirenscape has some good things uh, for like monster audio clips. Um, those are good to kind of give the monster some presence, especially if you have some good bassy speakers for some of those larger footfalls, because this thing's like a big giant 
guy. He's gonna be thumping around, and you wanna have those like, oh, moving around kind of um, monster sounds. That would give it like that really good presence at the table. Partner that with some good like RGB lighting, like you bring the lights down a little bit and you have just some nice colored lighting. If it's like an undead kind of thing, maybe something tinted to something green and purple, some complementary colors, a little bit of candlelight around. Ooh, really creepy. Especially if you bring in the right music, something's really nice and dramatic. Like the partnership of like sound and lighting would really up the atmosphere in a situation like that. Awesome, I will definitely look into that. I just, like I said, I want to make sure it's as just creepy as possible. All right, so my models are all cut up and ready for printing, but I wanted to say a huge thank you to Sebastian. This has been a ton of fun, and I really enjoyed working on this project together. Uh, thanks so much for having me. It was an amazing experience. It really kind of, especially with those 3D scraps that I've had to create something new and creative from it all. So it's um, amazing how it's all come together and fantastic to see what you're doing on your channel. Can't wait to see more. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely go over and check out Sebastian's video. He's going to be posting pictures of, of his really cool creation. So definitely go check that out. And while you're there, check out a bunch of his other cool videos because I've learned a ton and I'm sure that everybody else can benefit from adding some, some really creepy atmosphere to their table. All right, here's the final reveal. I think this thing turned out great, but I'd love to hear what you think. Would you have done something different? Maybe added more pieces? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to give one more huge thank you to Sebastian from Atmoseeker. I had a ton of fun working on this project with him. Definitely check out his version of this video in the link down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel and I really appreciate it. And if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support me, you can find my Patreon information down below. Alright, let's go print something.